Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Remko Rinkema, and you are watching Run It Back, the show in which we watch old school poker action, sometimes from a long time ago, like today, you can see it on the screen, or sometimes from more recently, uh, as we've done with some uh, big final tables from Poker Masters, Super High Roller Bowl, and the US Poker Open over the last few months. Recently, we've been doing a lot of action surrounding Tom Dwan versus Phil Helmuth on High Stakes Duel. And today, I want to hear from you guys on how you feel about the action from last night between Phil and Tom. Clearly, for those who haven't watched it yet, turn it off right now because this show will include some spoilers. We will talk about High Stakes Duel between Tom and Phil. But also, you can call in once again. We have the link posted in the chat on Twitch, on Facebook, and on YouTube. So please join me as we dive into the 1998 World Series of Poker main event. It is the final table featuring Scotty Wynn, the legend. And we're just going to have some fun with this. Uh, I believe I've only seen this once. It was a very long time ago. Uh, and I can barely remember um, anything other than the final quote in which, of course, Scotty Wynn uh, says the famous words. If you're going to call... It's going to be all over, baby. And that is what we are looking out for today. Wisco Baron in the chat on YouTube. D Brax in the chat on YouTube as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll do some shout outs today. So you guys, please let me know where you're watching from. If you're tuned into the stream, I know there's so much poker action happening that it's hard to even keep track. It's hard to even stay in the know about everything that you have to watch. We had high stakes duel last night. This morning, we started out with a 25k short deck final table from Super High Roller Bowl Europe uh, with, of course, Jeff Brent, uh, Jeff Platt and Brent Hanks on the call. Tony G managed to win that final table. And then we had the 501k uh, cash game with Jungle Man, True Teller. Uh, Mr. Limitless uh, and a whole bunch of other uh, uh, players that were uh, having a blast there on that stream. So tons of poker action. This is bas basically a little bit of a nightcap for most of you guys out there because Jeff and Brent are back with more live action tomorrow as the Super High Roller Bowl Europe continues. All those streams are available for free, by the way, on Poker Go. So none of that stuff is behind the paywall. Just sign up to Poker Go, make an account. You can watch it either whether you're subs subscribed or not. And then we are doing one more YouTube stream as well from Europe, which is going to be day two of Super High Roller Bowl Europe, a 250K buy-in. That's going to be next week on Tuesday. Um, set your alarms. I think action starts at 4 a.m. Pacific, 7 a.m. Eastern, uh, so somewhere in the afternoon in Europe. All right, some of my favorites are already in the chat. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, I'm going to go and invite you guys to join me on the call. I see Gary Wenzel already in the Zoom call. Gary, if you unmute and turn on your webcam, you can be on the show. That's how this show works. We take callers. This is like old school radio. You know, if you're new to the show, uh, we, we take callers, we share stories, and we have some fun with it. But first, um, let me quickly uh, play a little bit of the intro of this 1998 WSP main event so we get a little bit of a taste of uh, what poker was like back in 1989. No, sorry, 1998. Welcome. To the 1998 World Series of Poker from Binion's Horseshoe Casino in Las Vegas. Champions and celebrities from more than 30 countries have gathered to stake their claims to the coveted title of World Champion and the fabulous first prize of $1 million in cash. That's amazing. These graphics are fantastic. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the World Series of Poker, the 29th annual at Binion's Horseshoe. I'm Vince Van Patten, and I'm standing here with Jim Ulbrich, and we are watching one heck of an event, Jim. Yes, this has been an extraordinary event. Over the 21 events that make up the World Series, we've had 12 and a half million in prize money. This event, the main event, the $10,000 World Championship, started four days ago with 350 players. Whoa. Three million and a half on the table. We're now down to the final five. Well, it just shows you how poker is really growing. In fact, this year they're going to be doing a poker movie called Rounders, which will be coming out this summer, and I think it's very good for the game. In fact, there's two movie stars that are in that. That's Matt Damon and Ed Norton, and they played in this event this year. Yes, actually, uh, Matt Damon got knocked out by two-time former world champion Doyle Brunson, who had aces. He had a pair of kings. Sure. Sure. So it's been very, very exciting. And yesterday something happened very exciting. This is the first time we're going to be starting this table with five players. That's true. This is very unusual. Never happened before. Normally we start with six. The only way you could start with five is if two players were eliminated on the same hand. Right. And that's exactly what happened last night. Scotty Nguyen knocked out two guys from London, one with aces, one with tens, when he made a flush on the very last card. Well, it was late at night. We started with 350 players. We were now down to seven, all trying to make that final day. 
know, we just need one more and we come back to the final day and believe me, nobody wants to be player number seven. The crowd was getting a little restless and it happened. Now here's the hand we were talking about. Uh, Scotty's on the button. Dan Lomberg is already all in with two tens. This is Ben Roberts. He's all in. He's got two aces. Look at that. He's got to feel great. He's got to feel great. Absolutely. Right? But he probably really doesn't want Scotty in this spot. That's right. He'd rather play heads up against uh, one hand, make the final day. But here comes Scotty. Let's see what he's got. This is amazing. Queen. Oh, Queen of Diamonds. Not in very good shape right now. So for those who are just tuning in, we are watching the 1998 World Series of Poker. This is the final table bubble. They are down to seven. Uh, ben Roberts is all in with aces. Jan Lundberg is all in with tens. And Scotty Wynn, who has a massive stack in front of him, has ace-queen of diamonds calling the shove of both players. So putting two guys at risk here on this TV final table bubble uh, because back in the day, they came back with six for the televised broadcast. Brown, the pair of tens. Needs a lot of help. The tens need a lot of help. Uh, Ben's in great shape with these two aces. Oh my, I mean, this is why we play poker, for this kind of excitement, this kind of action. Oh yeah, watch this flop. Oh, You're no. just not even gonna believe it. Scotty gets all the help. It comes queen, wow. diamond, diamond. So he's got a flush draw. The queens are no good yet. The crowd was going crazy. A lot of ways he can improve. Right. And the foreigners were doing well up until this point. I mean, they won over $2 million at this World Series. This is, uh, Ben's still got to feel pretty good. He's praying. Well, sure, he's got the best hand. The only thing that can hurt him now is a 10 or a diamond. Oh, wow. And sure enough, Scotty makes a diamond on the end. Knocks out two birds with one deuce of diamonds. Incredible. There we go. Scotty Wynn, ladies and gentlemen. He, of course, the legendary player who has won many bracelets. In Las Vegas, Nevada, is brought to you by Mountain Valley Spring Water. Quenching America's thirst. This is amazing. Anyway, we are watching the 1998 WSB main event. If you have a story to tell me about your first ever WSB experience, whether that is playing or whether that is watching the WSOP, I would love to hear from you. So please click on the link in the chat if you want to come on to the Zoom call and discuss with me your first experience of the WSP. By the way, that's Miami John Cernuda there on the bottom left, I'm pretty sure. Um, if you guys spot anyone in the crowd from uh, that you recognize, please let me know because I always love... Is that... Is that huh... Is that, no, it's not Ralph Perry. I, anyway, we have we have lots of famous people in the, in the stands usually at these final tables. Um, I believe we spotted Greg Raymer watching the 2002 main event final table uh, a couple months ago. Here's Scotty. Special poker player. He's cashed in three additional events this year at the World Series, been at the final table twice. Currently in second place right now in seat number one, we have Kevin McBride okay. from Boca Raton, right. okay, Florida. <laughs> so he's currently in second place right now with 873,000 in chips. In third place right now, with 829,000, is TJ Cloutier. Oh, Valley on Twitch pointed out that Mike Mattisau is on the rail. Um, we're going to see lots more of Mike Mattisau later in this broadcast. I remember that. Uh, by the way, we're live on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. I do do shout-outs. Uh, let me know where you're watching from, and I'll give you guys some attention. I love having you all with me here today. Valter, watching from Switzerland. Switzerland. Uh, Mark Mark Dickstein on Facebook says, In my first WSB main event, I was first out with set over set. Mark, that is horrendous. That is a terrible story. I'm sorry for you, man. That sucks. Please, first cash the money. He's starting out with 240,000 in chips. Dealer, okay, so the action deal. starts on day four with 350 players entering. That means three and a half million dollars on this table. What do you think of this, Ben? Uh, it's just, it's just amazing. I mean, um, this is the largest prize money in the history of this tournament. Absolutely. <laughs> and we're down to five, which means uh, the, Obviously, even the player that gets knocked out fifth is going to get back 190,000 dollars. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind having that kind of a payday for the worst case situation. I know it. Now, our tournament leaders right now, Scotty Nguyen, with over a uh, million dollars in chips. Uh, here's Scotty Nguyen in, uh, on the right in the white. Uh, for people asking about the uh, 50K stream from the Super High Rollable Europe in Cyprus, that is kicking off again tomorrow with the final table. Jeff and Brent on the call. It is going to be live on PokerGo for free, so not behind the paywall. You, can, you should definitely go and check that out. Um, just for the people who are curious about the action, um, I can already tell you that Phil Ivey is at the final table tomorrow. It is Selhadin Badir who leads the way, Albert Daher in second, Seth Davies, Jake Schindler, then Ivey, then Saman three, and Danny Tang. So seven players left in the 50K. I believe there's 800K or 830K up top for the winner. So tomorrow that 50K action will kick off. I, I want to say that's at 7 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, so nice uh, at a nice hour, I think 4 p.m. Uh, Central European time uh, for that event. 
Uh, Padraig is watching from Ireland. Thank you so much. I almost chose the final table of Noel Furlong for today's stream, but I will do that at some point later because I do watching these old school WSB main event final tables. Um, Mike D says, didn't, didn't matter how stake Scotty. I believe so. I believe he had a had a big piece of Scotty win and you can see him at the end celebrating with him, which is pretty funny. Um, Fabiano, he says hello from Facebook. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Matt Bennett says, up in Canada, still locked out of live poker. I've been itching for over a year. Matt, I feel so sorry for you i hope everything with you is good as far as the health goes and just keep in mind you know poker will always be there hopefully uh hopefully you guys uh, can all have the patience to come back to vegas at some point when that is once again safe i am lucky to be in vegas i have not played much live poker but i should really get back into it because i do miss the action um rodney levinson says thanks for showing these classic episodes from east texas rodney thank you so much for tuning in i appreciate that that is awesome um what else do we got here Chris Mace says, big Remco guy here. Shouts from Pittsburgh. Thank you for everything you do for the poker community. Chris, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate that. And please, for everyone who watches this, once it's possible again, I will be doing uh, tours of the PokerGo studio when that is possible again. So let's say next year. Let's just be very easy about this. In the spring next year somewhere, when things are, you know, calm down in every single state and every single country, we can all do things safely again. I will be doing tours again of the PokerGo studio. So just hit me up on Twitter. You see my name down here. Just give me a follow. My DMs are always open. If we can coordinate it during your visit of Las Vegas, I will give you a tour of the studio. Uh, that, that will be my pleasure. Anyway, let's get back to the action. And Kevin McBride with almost a million in chips. They've got to be huge favorites at this point. Everybody else is, uh, is pretty short stacked, so they're not going to have as much time to do some hand selection. They're not going to have the advantages Scotty that those two spot players for will have. Kevin McBride's got to be nervous, even though he has a big stack in front of him. It's, uh, he's kind of the rookie player in here. TJ Cloutier, the legend, calls. of course. TJ calls. We've got to pop the first hand. I believe it was the first well, player with out, 10 million in earnings. First pot and a pretty good one. King, eight, you know, deuce offsuit, on the first hand. I, that's, that's very unusual. Usually the players are trying to see which way the action's going to go. Right. The flop comes king, eight, deuce, three different suits, so there's really no draws out there. No flush draw, no straight draw. Looks like Scotty's going to bet a little something here. 44,000. Uh -huh. Oh, boy. Is that a string bet? TJ makes it 200,000. I must bet my house. Yeah, so we made king, a very eight, fast race. You have to suspect at this point that TJ probably has a king. Uh, probably also with a with a good kicker. Now Scotty doesn't really have to take a chance here, does he? Because he has such a big stack in front of him. Right, Scotty's our chip leader. More than a million in chips. He doesn't he doesn't have to get involved. If he does get involved, he can't get hurt all that bad. But there's a huge difference between fifth place and first place, <coughs> and that's what Scotty wants. He wants the million dollars, not the hundred ninety thousand that each one of these players is guaranteed. TJ such a great champion, has won so many different championships. This is the only one that's eluded him. First pot's 191,000, oh yeah, really plus 156,000 dollar raise. Looks like the boys came ready to gamble with this. this. Oh, he oh, passes. He goes, huh? oh wait, TJ did have the king with a queen kicker. <laughs> All right, there we have the first hand of this final table. Keep in mind, by the way, that these broadcasts were very basic. We, we were going to see very few hands. That's why it's fun to pause it every now and then to remind you guys of the action. By the way, all these final tables are available on Poker Go. So every single WSP main event final table that was ever broadcast, with the exception of the Chris Ferguson one, which we have not been able to locate at a high enough quality to put on Poker Go, uh, is available on PokerGo.com. So go check that out. Um, Podrick says, no furlong legend, definitely a legend. Dragon7 says, I love it, baby. Yeah, lots of babies going around here at this final table. Chris, we'll make sure to connect when you come to Vegas for the first time. Uh, we'll make it happen next year. Hopefully, that will be awesome. Um, let's see. Guy McComb says, okay, play the video. If you don't like my talking, this is all available on Poker Go. It's already there. I'm just taking it from Poker Go and I'm watching it with you guys. So let's just have some fun with it. By the way, phone lines are still open. F find the link in the chat and join me if you are brave enough. Join me if you want to say something about your WSP experience from the past. Maybe you have a story about the main event. Uh, earlier we saw a gentleman saying that he busted set over set. Uh, or maybe you have a cool story of watching the WSP back in the day in your you know, dorm room or maybe with your parents when it was first on TV whenever that was for you, uh, in depending on the country that you're in. So, yeah, just let me know. All right, anyway, let's see the next hand. Scotty's playing with his and the red chips are $10, sunglasses on, of course. Each one of those red chips I asked him yesterday about it, and he said, uh, 
I said, well, do, you, do you wear the sunglasses because uh, they're going to detect something about your eyes? And he goes, absolutely. <laughs> I don't want anyone to see what I'm doing. <laughs> so he feels there's a lot that poker players can see in people's eyes and see their pupils dilating. Right, and Scotty is one of our pros. TJ obviously would be the other one. Uh, Dewey Williams, a serious player. Uh, Lee Salem is a high stake California player, uh, kind of new to the tournament circuit. Kevin McBride, brand new to the tournament circuit. 100,000 more, 150 to go. So we've got a good mix. Someone brought their walk, man. It's pretty cool. You know, I played in that satellite against Kevin yesterday, or it was on Sunday, and uh, we were down to the last three tables, and I had a hand, and uh, I pushed Kevin all in, and we turned over our hands, and I was in front, and the only card he could have tied me with was a queen if it comes up. And sure enough, a queen came up, which kept him, had him survive in that tournament. If he hadn't, he's out of that satellite, and who knows if he puts up his 10,000 to play this big one. One for Scotty. So what I'm saying is that should be me out there. And so what you're saying is you're part of the reason he's here. <laughs> I really am. It's got to be an Ooh, amazing man, feeling. You are, you are caught. Double team. Yeah, you are. Yesterday I had TJ on one side and Mike Lang on the Kevin other. Kevin now has the button. Five and ten thousand dollar blinds go to Lee Salem and Just, TJ Coulier. Three or four. It's uh, right. a good the top players don't look at their hands like Elise Salem in the blind, the first blind. He's not looking at his hand until it's his turn. He's studying everybody else's face first, and then he peeks at his card and then makes his decision. And that's what most of the pros do. Yeah, and right now Lee is the low man on the uh, chip total. He's got about 150,000, maybe 160. So he's going to have to make a move pretty quick. Hundred sixty-eight more. He's gonna go all in. There it is, all in. All in. Hundred sixty-eight thousand more. He says. Is that counting the fifty? Yeah. Uh, I don't you know. Two eighteen total. That. Well, let me put the. Uh, put fifty, put the 50 all in there. Huh? I mean, put fifty. Fifty in first. So it's up to Kevin, right? Okay, and then and then yeah. Yes. <laughs> As the action comes back to Kevin, hundred sixty-eight thousand more. Jack McClellan's doing a chip uh, count. Get the exact total. Oh. Raise. Turns out it's one sixty-three thousand. Raise. Notice T.J. Cloutier smoking at the table with his arm away from the table. Back in the day, smoking was just allowed everywhere, and I cannot imagine playing against players that were smoking. I would totally, totally lost it. Jason Warner says might be a disc man. Yes, could definitely be a disc man. Also, I I used to rock this giant Sony disc man with a uh, with a shock proof or whatever it was called, and I had it in my in my winter coat pocket, and I would ride my bike to school. And those were the days. Brought extra CDs. Kevin looks like he's going to call this. Yeah, he's got his plan made up. He's just waiting for a trip to a little bit of nervousness there. Mm -hmm. His hand's shaking a little bit. Kind of hard to blame him. <laughs> Been playing poker since January. He finds himself at the final table of the World Series of Poker. Kevin calls. We got a $436,000 pot. He's counting up, see how much will I have left if I lose this pot. And actually, he'll be in very good shape still. There we go. He's there. We have our first all-in pot. Kevin's got ace four clubs. Lee Salem has ace jack. He is a huge favorite. Salem is a favorite. Flop comes king eight seven with two clubs. Kevin's got the nut flush draw. Lee's got the best hand with ace jack right now. Yes. Cards with club. yes. Hold on, right. hold on, hold on. You can catch the nine Kevin clubs. makes a, the nut flush. Lee can catch the nine of clubs to make a straight flush. Red rag. Red rag. River cards are five of spades. Lee Good Salem becomes you. our fifth place right. finisher. Nice Kevin McBride. Right. That's it for Lee Salem, who finishes in fifth place. $190,000. Not a bad Wow, big celebration there from McBride as he knocked out his opponent. Um, you guys, what are you guys' thoughts on celebrating when you bust someone? Do you feel you have to be gracious when you win, or is it okay to celebrate and, and go crazy and, and cheer a bit? So let me know in the, in, the, in the chat what you guys think. Personally, 
I don't really appreciate that unless you win a tournament, of course, because that's a big reason to celebrate. Otherwise, it's kind of like rubbing it into the face of someone who just got eliminated. So uh, maybe a little, little fist bump below the table or something. But anyway, let me know in the chat. Do you guys celebrate when you bust someone out of a tournament? I'm very curious. By the way, look on screen. Matt Damon and Edward Norton coming up next. We're going to listen to that. Welcome back to the World Series of Poker, where celebrities keep showing up. This year, it was Matt Damon and Edward Norton. Both good players. I know it. I know it. And they're doing that. They did this that film awesome. Rounders, which will be out. And they got to play in the tournament. Phil Helmet and Huck Seed were kind of like the gurus for the event. And you know what Matt said? Matt said this was the biggest rush of his life. And that was days after winning the Academy Award for Goodwill Hunting. I said, no, not the chest, an actor. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it's then we're going to give it all back. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> what he said, get off it. This is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought he, I thought he had an ace. He looks like a, an executive of some kind, the way he signed. Look at that. Let's watch the World Series of Poker right here on ESPN. Not with a hand like that, though. I'm standing here with Matt and Ed who played professional card players in this film called Rounders, which I hear is terrific. But you guys did it for real today. You played the World Championship. What, what was it like? It was an absolute adrenaline rush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was something I'll never forget. It was this great. amazing. It was great. And you played against Doyle, and you had I a sat with hand, Doyle, right? yeah. I, I, I had a, uh, I, I lost the way I, the, the way I would have wanted to. I mean, I, I, I knew coming here that I was going to lose. I'm probably the, you know, ever. And I was, I was saying earlier, we're probably the only people who didn't never entertain the fantasy of winning. You know, right, right, I, sure. mean, I knew I was going to lose. The question was how. And so to lose to Doyle, I, I had uh, pocket kings. Right. He had pocket aces. So I, I, I went after him with my final 6,200 bucks, and, and and he took it from me. So it was a good. I'm going home with a story. That's fantastic. I went, I, I went out very happily too. I had a, I had a full house. I had nines full of tens, and um, this guy Surrender, who's a really big right. sure. player, big player in the tournament, uh, he he had four tens. So I got I got crushed with an impossible. How hand. are these guys different? I mean, they're they're a different breed. They're sort of like a modern day cowboy, you know, putting up their own money and taking a shot at this type of stakes. How are these guys different in character and personality? Would you say? It's like anything else at the highest levels. I mean, it's, you know, it's like Wimbledon or, or Kasparov and Karpov and the chess tournaments. I mean, I think it's a lot like that to me because it's a very sophisticated game that operates on a lot of levels, both sort of mathematical and then strategic and then psychological. And when you're playing with these guys, there, there may be luck on any given hand, but over, over time, the, the really terrific players will crush you. It's like, it's like, and when you're playing with people at that level, it's that's like, kind of what the rush is. It's, it, it is like, uh, like, like trying to swing at Roger Clemens' fastball. You know, you might get a hold of one, and you might hit it really far, but I mean, how often is that going to happen? You guys think you're hooked now? You think you'll play a little bit in your life? You we'll come back get whenever better? they have us back. We'll Anytime back. they want to stake us ten thousand uh, dollars, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll be we'll in. Be, we'll be back to lose it. So. Well, good luck with the, with the movie. I hear it's great. And, All uh, right. Thanks. Let's have some fun out there. You bet. Yeah. I mean, that's just simply incredible to see Edward Norton and Matt Damon at the 1998 WSOP. This is just before Rounders came out. So we're, they were doing some promotions for Rounders at the WSOP. And for Matt Damon to get eliminated by Dole Brunson with Kings into Aces, I mean, that's a story for the ages. That is something that should be a part of like you know every like pub quiz if you do one about poker. Or, or whatever you want to call that sort of trivia night or whatever. But it'd be amazing to have that um, as, as part of, of Poker Trivia Night. And maybe you guys watching right now have that ace up your sleeve. Who uh, who was the player that eliminated Matt Damon from the 1998 WSP main event? And then also bonus points if you can uh, name the cards. Kings to aces. Um, Jason Warner says, I've been playing poker in card rooms since 1995 and I've never been able to smoke in a poker room. I'm thinking they allowed smoking because at Binion's and the WSB was on the main casino floor. That's interesting. Um, Daniel Negreanu has told me stories where he would come out to WSOP and he would basically just, you know, lose his mind because of all the smoking at the table. So I do think that at some point in some places it was allowed, but maybe rules were different in different places. I remember... When I first started playing poker, uh, th there was smoking at every table in the Netherlands, and that's not even that long ago. Um, that's like 2004, 5, 6 in, in that era. Um, let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, Dragon, Dragon 7 says, celebrate to tilt the enemy. That's kind of funny. I appreciate that one. Um, Andrew Osborne says, only at the final table when the pay jumps really mean a lot to you, you can celebrate. I agree. That's kind of cool. Main event, final table, I'll probably celebrate if I ever make it. Will I ever make it? Definitely not. 
Um, Phil Oates says, equally gracious in defeat and victory, a simple handshake. Well, elbow touch, nubs, uh, would do. Uh, he says, greetings from the UK. Uh, Podrick says, I think you should be gracious, but if but if it's completely spontaneous from a new player, it's okay. True. I agree. I agree. I agree. Um, Boogaloo, Boogaloo says, howdy on Twitch. Thank you so much for tuning in. You guys on Twitch, please uh, do give me some love. Let me know where you're watching from. I appreciate that. Um, Keith says, always act classy. Uh, definitely. Being classy definitely goes a long way. All right. Back to the final table action. Let's have a look. Uh, and that really picked up the action around here. A lot of spectators came in to see these two actors play against the world champions. Yeah, good guys. Four-handed action. And I think uh, a lot of actors are fascinated by poker uh, w because of the acting we element involved in it. Oh, absolutely. Actually, you're always uh, you're uh, always on stage when you're in a poker game. Like Dewey hey, right now, Dewey Williams is our short stack. He's also on champion. TJ used to uh, seriously just w work on a ranch, right? He just real cow hand. Yeah. Back in Texas. And did you know that TJ was a tight end in the was a tight end in the uh, CFL? I didn't know For that. a lot of years. How many years, T? What? Tight end. Five years of professional football, and he has some aching knees to prove it. That's awesome. Well, I think Helmet poker. You know, I think it has. A, it's kind of like. And what an athlete has to go through, you know, getting up for it. Oh, absolutely. And uh, <coughs> conditioning yourself, believing in yourself. Uh, you're to, so right. You know, and if you're winning tournaments along in. the way, that's helpful. All right, here's Dewey Wayne all in. There's about a 95% chance that they're both going to fold, and Dewey just wins this pot. That's the way it goes in no limit hold them. Well, Scotty's out, but Kevin likes to see flops. He may give Dewey some action. Uh -oh. Scotty Fulch, Kevin here's the, here's the Kevin 5% calls. here. This man's found a big hand. Let's see what they have, gentlemen. They're all in. So Kevin won't be hurt I if he loses this spot. Maybe Dewey's such a tough player, Probably but I suspect Dewey. Kevin might have Dewey that. loses this spot, he'll be out. No. What is it? King, King Jack, Jack of Diamonds? Kevin's got King Jack of Diamonds. Dewey went all in for 139,000. Well, Dewey Dewey's about what? Three, about three to two favorite here? About a three to two favorite with the ace seven, seven offsuit. Oh my oh, god. Wow. Wow. There's King the Kings. Seven. That's a tough break. That's a very tough break for Dewey William. Oh, Dewey's oh, no. Not only three kings, but oh, a plus draw to boot. Dewey William becomes our fourth place finisher. Dewey. Dewey William, right. the great All right, we're down to three. TJ Cloutier, Kevin McBride, and Scotty win the 1998 WSP main event. We're doing some old school throwback classic stuff here on Run It Back. You guys, thanks so much for joining me as we see Dewey leave the stage collecting a quarter million dollars. Million dollars up top four. The winner, by the way, let's keep that in mind as well. Uh, Boogaloo says, R.I.P. Sexton. Vince got me thinking about him. Yeah, indeed. Um, Vince Van Patten here as one of the sideline reporters and commentators um, is, is definitely bringing up memories of Mike Sexton, poker legend, who we sadly lost last year uh, to cancer. Um, very, very sad about that still. And um, I think that's probably not even going to sink in until WSP is back again. Um, meanwhile, we're getting some shots of the room. Mel Judah in the house. Uh, Omaha. What we got here? Oh, the events are listed on a big whiteboard. Reduced to seven and variations of holding. Over twelve and a half million dollars was paid. All this money put up by players over the course of the three weeks. Okay, back to the final table action. So we're four hours in and we've seen four hands. Just to give you guys an idea of what poker broadcast used to be like. And you're watching these three guys play. I mean, it's just great that you can you can be here because I know you're such a great competitor. You know, you should be out there. That's what you're thinking. <laughs> what, what are these guys going through? What's it like at this point? You know, what, what's well, the Well, I mean, you know, you've got three guys. Kevin McBride is kind of an unknown here. So um, he's only been playing poker since January. But the other two guys, I guarantee you that their Dang. dream is to win the World Series of Poker. Okay, the flop comes 976, two diamonds. Scotty first to act, he checks. Next card, 10 of hearts. Mm. Wow. 
Well, this is the duel in the desert we were all looking for. Both men going eye to eye. Two chip leaders. Scotty checks again. Kevin still likes it. So I was just saying four hands in four hours on the broadcast. So we don't know how many hands they played. I believe there's not even uh, you know a hand for hand record of this final table. But uh, trust me when I say that uh, the play was pretty fast back in the day. So we definitely missed a lot of action. And now it's three handed with Cloutier, Wynn, and McBride at the final table. And even Scotty's impressed with the Kevin's hands. Uh, also, by the way, um, let's see who said that. Um, Rise and Shine says this, this looks like a home game. Uh, Tim P says the table looks small. Uh, yeah, Tim, this is just a regular old casino poker table that they're playing on. If you played at Binion's in the poker room at any point, you would pro you've probably played at one of the main event tables from back in the day where all the legends played at, um, which is pretty pretty funny. Um, I played at Binion's the first year I came to Vegas back in 2009 just to be able to say that I did. And they had this, um, I think it was like a 1-2-0 no limit game with an uncapped buy-in. Um, uh, Link... Linkso Karina says, uh, "Got to love the abridged uh, coverage. Just getting that to the nitty gritty. Exactly. We're it's only probably. getting the big hands. Oh, lost some audio here. Let's see if it comes back. Oh, we're having some issues here with the feed. Anyway, uh, if you guys want to shout out, please chime in. Let me know in the chat. We are live on Twitch, on Facebook, and on YouTube. Um, let me know where you're watching from. I'd love to let you guys give you guys a little shout. Um, I love sharing. I love sharing the love." Uh, as I as I always like to say, uh, I think my VLC player might have crashed. I'm gonna do a little reboot here of the VLC player. Um, anyway, you guys, let me know if, about this final table. Have you ever seen this action before? Um, I have seen this once before, but it's been a very very long time since I have. And yes, indeed, VLC crashed. So let's reboot this. Was it somewhere else? Um, tell me all about it. Why is this not working? Huh. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, we are restarting the action. Let's see if I can get this aligned properly. Okay. The beauty of technology. There we go. All right, where were we? I think we were here somewhere. Oh, yeah, that looks familiar. There it is. All right, we're back. Um, if you guys want to join the show, please know that you can join me on the Zoom call. The link is in the chat. All right, let's get caught up on the chat here in just a second. Uh, Gus says, watch from Bellagio playing 510. Gus, good luck at the table, man. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll stumble into Bellagio every now and then. Love that room. Haven't played there in a while, though. Andrew Osborne, watch from Connecticut, USA. Um, Tajis... Ta Taji Supreme says, hello, Remco, watch from Miami. Appreciate you tuning in from Miami. Uh, shouldn't you be like on a patio somewhere with a cold beverage? I love I love Miami, especially at night when it cools down just a little bit. Uh, Central Florida in the house. Jonathan, thank you so much for watching this. Um, Rick says, cool, you, cool, cool you're doing this. Thank you, man. He's watching from Largo in Florida. Uh, we got lots of Florida in the house. That's cool. Um, Rick says, I lived in Europe and came back to the States in 2005 and saw the main on ESPN. I love it. I love it. My first ever WSP yeah, that yeah. I saw, and I've told this story before, is I played in a home game. And in the home game, I won a DVD set because I didn't cash. I think I finished like, you know, fifth or sixth. Uh, and that, that DVD set was of the 04 main event uh, won by Greg Raymer. So the 04 main event was the first WSP action I ever watched. But that was in 06. 2006 is when I started playing poker. All right, this is the Helmut and Vince Van Patten bit imagine that's a lot of money all to claim this title next year we're expecting over 400 wow so this is going to keep growing at a, at, a, at a huge rate i believe poker players are very intuitive you have to be you have to be able to read people now how does that carry over in your real life do you think you have a like an edge on people do you see through people a little bit more it makes, oh, well, uh, about it makes about forty thousand. Oh, we got a big pot makes about forty thousand. Big hand going TJ on. raises 120,000 more. Kevin calls. Kevin calls. Well, I'm a little bit shocked that Kevin just called a $120,000 raise from TJ because TJ is a very solid player. Flop comes 4, 5, 7. Flop comes 7, 5, 4, two spades. TJ moves all in. And TJ moves all in. There we go. Call. Wow. 400,000, Kevin call. says call. Unbelievable. Wow. More than a million dollars in the pot. 
TJ wow, has king queen offsuit. Here. He's got the best hand. This is over a million dollar pot. I Kevin suppose. has a flush draw. Jack. Jack makes Kevin two card comes. Hold on. Are you guys seeing this? McBride snap called the all in with Jack nine of spades, two over cards, and a flush draw. Cloutier was all in with king queen, no flush draw. So basically, McBride was probably like slightly in the lead with the flush draw and the two and the two live cards. But Cloutier had king high, and that was actually the best hand in the moment. And then McBride, McBride spikes a jack on the turn. Um, Keep that in mind. Poker was crazy back then, you know? Don't don't think that these people were all nits. So Jack King makes Kevin two jacks. Oh. Oh. Last card's a deuce. TJ becomes our third place finisher. Wow. Cloutier gets $437,000. He's out the door. We're heads up. McBride versus Scotty Wynn. We've seen five hands, five eliminations. No big deal. $37,500. All three players were knocked out by Kevin. All three had better hands before the flop. Kevin just keeps making I'll tell you one thing about this hand. That was very shocking. It sure was. It was shocking. To make that call with Jack Nine Spade. To him, to, to, he raised 40000 TJ's been playing great poker all day. TJ raised him 120000 There's no way in the world, you know, you should make, you should call 120000 more with a Jack Nine suited. No way. Kevin read TJ's book. Now he beat the author. So yesterday we had the duel, uh, a high stakes duel. Back then they had the duel in the desert. Great name there. McBride versus Scotty Wynn. That is what's happening. Heads up in the 1998 WSP main event. You guys, thanks all so much for tuning in. We're having a little bit of fun today watching this old school action from the WSOP. And now, of course, we are just anticipating that moment where Scotty Wynn says those famous words. We'll get to that in just a bit. Just want to let you guys know we have launched a new Instagram page. It's Poker Go Tour. We're going to put all our high roller coverage and all our high roller content on the Poker Go Tour Instagram page. So if you like the Poker Go Tour, Instagram account. So it's just Poker Go Tour, all one word on Instagram. Give it a follow. We just launched the new page. That way you'll stay up to date on all the latest streams, all the latest high stakes, high roller tournament action, and everything else that we have going on at Poker Go. And I know you guys are fans, so that's why I'm just mentioning it to you. Go check that out. Send him to the rail. All right. And commercial break, and we're back. Oh, there's this. There's the um, Mountain Valley sponsored uh, cardboard box with, of course, all the cash inside. Scotty Wynn looking a little bit nervous as the bricks of cash are being laid out on the table. Um, lost audio again. Not sure why. VLC is acting up a little bit today. Um, either way, I can still keep talking when the video is running. Uh, but yeah, I love this part of any major events at the WSOP when they put the ca cash out on the table. Um, I think they only do it or, or stuff like that. So I don't know why my audio is not working. I'd love to hear the Helmut commentary here. Uh, maybe you got to reboot again. That would be a shame. Uh, McBride versus Scotty Wynn. And because we don't have graphics on screen, I don't even know what's happening. We've got the King Queen Nine on the board with the five on the turn. Um, while you guys are all trying to follow us on Instagram on at Boca Tour, I am just going to restart this damn VLC media player again. I don't know what... I don't know what's going on. I've never had this issue before. You guys all watch this show all the time and know that we generally do not tend to have any major issues. Um, let's see. Continue. Okay. I guess we are back in business. Let's see. We got we got we got to hear the famous the famous Scotty Wynn moment. That we can't we can't just watch this without audio. That would be ridiculous. Okay. We're resizing this thing so that it's all in there okay let's have a look there it is audio is back a big check for me now this is cash absolutely and it's the rookie versus the seasoned veteran actually the rookie kevin mcbride was uh a little bit more money so down the stretch we go kevin mcbride holding his own can we adjust to this heads up play that's the question up comes King Queen Nine with two hearts. Scotty, a seasoned veteran. Kevin in here on a satellite, $220 satellite. Looking to win a million dollars. Kevin bet 60000 Scotty follows. Only in America. Only in America, ladies and gentlemen. Kevin checks. Flop is king, queen, nine, two hearts. 
they used to have at the WSOP. And now, of course, it's all the, the I guess it's the clay chips that are sort of, you know, I don't know, more snappy. They're, they're, they're a little bit softer on the, on the hands. Um, anyway, got some good people in the chat uh, chiming in, uh, people suggesting I should quit VLC and sh sh shift to a different player. If this keeps happening for the next show, I might as well have to, uh, to go over to a new player. Uh, but I appreciate you guys tuning in. Turn cards of five of clubs. Uh, McBride, by the way, has a chip lead. A good question coming in from uh, Brad on Facebook. Uh, it is McBride, McBride with a small chip lead at this point. Kevin checks to Scotty. No idea how many big blinds. We don't even know what the blinds are. Scotty makes it 90,000. Mike DeMouth is definitely back there somewhere. You'll see him later. Kevin talking to himself a little bit there, fumbling. Mm -hmm. trying to, mm -hmm. He talks himself into it. Yeah. Kevin calls 90,000. Last card. Ace of spades. Ace of spades. And Kevin comes out swinging right away. 200,000 immediately. Scotty Wynn reminds me of Stu Unger. We're all just walking around now? Is that a thing? What? Scotty gets up quickly. And that, that move is going to make Scotty think. Now, there was a straight on the, on the flop. A possible straight of 10 jack would have made a straight. The ace would not have affected that situation. It would be an ace high straight now if that were the case. He moves so fast, he's almost indicating that he... That, that ace Scotty helped him. Raise. Made him two pairs, something like that. Scotty's going to raise. Scotty's going to raise. Scotty is raising. And you almost have to think that uh, Scotty's got a set or better at this point. Top two pair, three of a kind, or something better. Before the flop. Uh, because he's just raising another 200,000. Yeah. He wants him to call. That's right. He wants him to call. If that made Kevin Aces up. He's he nine, have. he's five, you never know. Scotty may have flopped a straight. Who knows? But it's a big hand and he wants a call. Mm -hmm. And the pressure's back on Kevin now. Oh, he throws it in. Let's send the backers, backers there. To a million and a half for Kevin. There it is. Scotty Wynn grabs the chip lead for everyone who is asking about the chip lead. This is the hand that got Scotty Wynn the chip lead. We do not know how many big blinds are in play. It's kind of hard to, to keep track of this event. By the way, Alex watching from Wilmington, North Carolina. I appreciate you tuning in. Um, for the people who watched High Stakes Duel last night, um, it was, of course, epic victory by Tom Dwan after a long, hard battle between him and Helmuth, which means that we will now see Tom Dwan play for $400,000 against who? We don't know yet because Helmuth has not yet declined or accepted to do a rematch. And if that if he ends up declining, that means Brent Hanks is going to find a new opponent for Mr. Tom Dwan, who has to win two more matches, which means we have a guaranteed 800K match coming up in High Stakes Duel because, of course, Dwan has only won one match and he needs to win two more. So that means that we're going to get pretty, pretty big into the high stakes realm there. Uh, Podrick says, great stream, great stream, Remco. I've seen a few of these. Um, if you are new to Run It Back, let me tell you, I usually have a guest. It's been hard lately to get some guests. I do have some cool guests lined up. Adam Levy is joining me uh, probably next week. We're going to watch the 2008 and 2010 WSOP where he went very, very deep. And then we have Daniel Dvores coming in just a few weeks to watch the Super High Roller Bowl Bahamas final table that he managed to win for $4 million. Now, in the past, I've done many shows with people like Greg Raymer, Chris Moneymaker, uh, Joe Hashem, um, Martin Jacobson, Ryan Reese, Joe McKeon to watch their main event final tables, and they gave a breakdown of the action from how they experienced that final table. So go check that out if you haven't seen it just yet. Also, special nugget, go check out Run It Back with Lex Veldhaus. Lex and I watched all his high-stakes poker appearances from back in the day. It was a three-hour show. It was fantastic. It was a lot of fun. Uh, you guys definitely cannot miss out on that. Um, back to the action here. Scotty Wynn heads up against Kevin McBride if you're just tuning in. The 1998 WSP main event, a million dollars up top. Good hands, Scotty. Okay. And heads up is a whole different game than a than a ring game. Um, the hand values change dramatically. You've got to play a lot more hands. And you've got to steal a lot more pots. How do I get the feeling that Kevin's like a nephew or anything? 
and just wait. I'm sitting here with TJ, who just had a real tough beat, finished third place. Well, everybody thought you were the favorite. You looked the most confident. You looked relaxed. You've been there before. I got a little more experience than these boys do. Right, right. <laughs> well, he's good for the game. He says he's only been playing for about three months, believe it or not. Do you believe that? No, he's been playing a little longer than that. He, read, he told me he bought my book and read it. He, in fact, he bought it twice. <laughs> There's a man who bought my book and beat me. <laughs> That's poker. Well, this is a great effort. Thanks for joining us. and uh, Appreciate it. Good luck next year. All right, buddy. All right. Thank you. Jack Binion has just joined us here, the owner of Binion's Casino. How you doing, Jack? Good. Doing good today. Exciting, exciting game. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of action. What do you think of this new player? He's, well, uh, he's pretty I, much I a nose. think I think uh, right now, unfortunately, uh, the lack of experience, this is what it really tells, and it's got him manhandled him a little bit. He's going to have to get a little more aggressive if he, right. if he oh, wow. to try to win. A little thing to point out here. Look at the stack sizes. Look at the stacks... Or remember the stack when they got to heads up, McBride has had a slight chip lead, and now they're saying we're into the fifth hour of play, meaning that we've skipped ahead another hour. Scotty Wynn has been chipping down McBride here, slowly but surely, and now, look, gauging at these chips, he has like a 5-1 to one or 4-1 to one chip lead. It's pretty impressive. Especially now that he's so far behind. Have you seen a player in the past um, be this much of an underdog come up and, 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 and be the, if, he ha if he should win or... Be not, up. not in and not in a long time uh, and when you say an underdog it shows what I've always said that if you're okay if you're not breaking par daily you know you can't win the US Open okay. the the if you're the only way you know you're the champion is beat the other players sure. and the truth is the best player might be playing in a kitchen table around Michigan right one day right now and he doesn't know it although when I say that Let's face it, uh, playing against tough competition makes you tough. Right. It's, you know, I know you're a great tennis player. If you'd only played a, a tennis against a guy that can just sneak the ball back and forth, you never can get good. You have to play against good guys to, that's right. to hone your game. And that's the same way here. Jack, you know that um, I played the Super Satellite on Sunday. In fact, right. I almost knocked Kevin out. In fact, I did knock him out, and then he did a rebuy, okay? You had to put in that rule about rebuys, oh, yeah. right? Oh. And then he went on, of course, and he won that super satellite, and now he's, he's doing this historic. Okay, so Vince Van Patten is on the broadcast with Jack Binion, who runs Binion's Horseshoe, telling a bad beat story about how, Ke how Kevin McBride is the one to knock him out of the satellite. That, to me, is like next-level stuff. Donnie Peters in the, in the chat on YouTube as well. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. I appreciate it. You're just in time to witness uh, one of uh, poker's most historic uh, quotes. And, of course, we all know what that is. Thing. Um, it, it's amazing. His man put up $420, and now he's going after a million. I know. Tell us uh, about uh, that. Well, I, well I, I, how we came up with the satellites originally, you know, is that uh, the, the, the players actually started the satellites because... You know, you had to come up with $10,000. So uh, 10 or 11 players got the, 10 players got the bright idea that they would put up $1,000 a piece and whoever won it would, would be able to get in the big game. Right. And it's obviously grown from there to where now you say, like you say, a guy technically can take $200 and run it into a million. It's just incredible. That's good. It's incredible. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, a, that's a good return on your investment. Shows Jack, nine of clubs, got a club flush. A big pay hand Scotty going on. Okay, so Kevin, the comeback kid, makes the flush to beat Scotty. Two aces. Maybe this will get him back on track. Welcome back to Binion's Horseshoe. We are watching the grueling duel in the desert. Who's going to Duel in the first? desert. There it is. So, Vince, have you ever had a mountain of chips like that in front of Scotty? It's so big you can barely reach around it. Uh, yeah, that's because I own the whole box. You know, I have a little poker game. I own the whole box, and then I. Uh, people asking in the chat about Kevin McBride, especially Linksa Karina on Twitch, says, uh, "Did McBride ever ever do anything after that?" You'd be surprised, actually. Um, McBride, of course, the famous runner-up in this event. Uh, this was not his first ever WSOP cash. He finished uh, fifth in a 5K limit hold'em event just f a few days before the main event, and that tournament was won by French singer and legend Patrick Bruel. Um, that final table also included Miami John, Men Win, uh, and Sam Grizzle, just to throw a few names at you. And McBride uh, also cashed the 2006 WSB main event, uh, and he has, I want to say, six more 
WSOP caches, and his most recent live tournament cash was at the uh, was at the Venetian Deep Stack in January of 2020. So McBride still playing poker, still around, uh, and maybe um, we'll be able to get. TV. That's about the extent of it. Uh, but no, you know, I played one tournament where I actually finished eighth, and that was at a club in California, and that was. Uh, a miracle. That's the best I've ever finished in any tournament. And I had a whole lot of chips for a while, you know, as a chip leader, and that was a that was a blast. Feels and good, doesn't oh, it? Oh man, it's like you're on the top of the world. Um, and I think that keeps drawing everybody back here. We've all felt it maybe once or twice. And Flop comes Ace Four Trey. Kevin checks and Scotty bets about forty thousand. Kevin calls. Next card, another four. Two fours, ace tray, two clubs. Kevin checks. Cuddy bets. Cuddy bets 80. Kevin 80, calls. 80, ace four, four tray. Kevin checks, calls Kevin. very quickly. Two clubs on board. Last card. Nine of hearts. Three cards are nine. You check hearts. two. I checked. Kevin checks. Scotty stands up and. Scotty bet 200,000. It's a very large bet. 200,000. Yeah. Oh boy. Kevin goes all Kevin in. Kevin moves all in. Wow. Two fours, ace, nine, tray on board. Oh boy, this could be it. He's going all in against Scotty. Obviously, if Scotty calls and wins the hand, it could be all over. Yeah, I just. Scotty calls and Kevin wins the hand, it'll be a whole new ball game. That's right, he's right back in there. How are you thinking about it? Man? Yep, he is. What do you think he has? Don't meet the camera. Ace, probably with a good kicker. Uh, yeah, we're walking again. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Again. Kevin McBride is all in for his tournament life, and he goes to the bathroom? Like, what kind of tell can you give off? This is incredible. I've never seen this before. This is the funniest moment of the final table. This is even better than the quote. Look at him. He's just walking off. I got to take a bathroom break. Like, how? what kind of tell is that? Like, if he's somehow bluffing, Scotty calls and he's out, he's out, tournament's over. Like, what the heck? Kevin asked Jack if he could go to the bathroom. Jack says, yes, you're all in. You're committed. Wow. I need to go all in to go to the bathroom. Where you go? Hmm? <laughs> we went to the bathroom. He says, if you call, he's in. That's amazing. Look well, at Scotty. it's going to be hard to read from the bathroom. <laughs> well, look at this. <laughs> I've never seen anything quite like this. There he is, Mike Mattis on the right there. Looks like a German DJ with his uh, goatee and the and and the the, gl the glasses look kind of cool actually. Before the crowd, uh, a little baffled by this move. Well, I'll tell you what. Either way, whether this is a ploy or not, it seems to have Scotty shook up a little bit. You can't read someone who's at the, in the bathroom. The it's hard to make a read. Kevin just shoved him in. Your your hand is definitely dead if you do that now. You're not even you're not even allowed to basically walk around the table or you know get up and walk around. I think your hand's dead. Let them pile all over each other as the chips went in. Well, there's two fours on board. Kevin went all in. I think he's got the trip fours. What do you think, Jeff? Well, that's what Scotty's got to figure out. 386 was raised. Where'd he go? <laughs> <laughs> he had to run the bathroom. Scotty really wants to read. He says, I can't call if I can't see him. Kevin raised 386,000. This is amazing. I think Scotty wants him to come back. He doesn't want to make a decision until he comes back and can read him a Isn't little bit. Is it the strongest tell ever? <laughs> what happened? 386,000 dollar raise. Did you call Scotty? Scotty's still 386, thinking. Right? 386. 386. Call? He's deliberating. Needling, Scotty. This is something you'd see at one this of my poker games. This is amazing. Not yet, okay? Don't, uh, make no, I, we understand. 386,000. So counting, still thinking. This is so Don't fun. commit me yet, he says. It's going to be all over if I read you right, man. If don't, we play again. I call. Scotty calls. Scotty calls. Kevin's got a 4-5 for 3-4. Four. Four. Scotty's got an ace-queen. Kevin wins the pot. Yeah! Yeah. And so... So this is the quote before the quote. If I read you right, it's going to be all over, baby. Well, the read was not right, and play continues. Play, play again. 
Oh boy, he looks oh. really shaky. Look at that look. What do you have in his hand? Four nice to five. Team. He's got a four and a five. Nice. Got him to commit to some big dollars there, and he's right back in the hunt here. Right back in the game. Just takes one Go turn ahead. around Good like spot. that. And Scotty half knew it. Scotty was talking to himself the whole time, saying, I don't know. If I'm reading you right, I've got you. If not, we'll play again. First real mistake we've seen Scotty make today. $1,478,000 pot. $1,478,000 pot. It's, uh, well, guess what? Kevin's not got $1,478,000. It's a whole new ball game. So basically, uh, almost back to even. There's, I believe there's three and a half million chips in play. 1.4 million for McBride right now. Hope he washed his hands after that mid-hand bathroom visit. Um, let's see what the next hand brings. Scotty's up, got two million twenty-two thousand. Let's see if Kevin can continue to baffle the world. The game heats up. Duel in the, de in the desert. Welcome back. Our rookie, Kevin McBride, has just evened up the odds, winning a one and a half million dollar pot with a four or five offsuit. So him pay, uh, playing those little four fives and three fives like he did early on. And he plays on. a lot of them, which makes him dangerous. Makes him very, very deceptive. If the flop comes big, he's dangerous. If the flop comes small, you have to worry. That's right. It's got to be two times this match. Jim Beckham was going to the bathroom. I call him. Right. If he calls, turn my hand up. Sixth hour of play. We're skipping ahead again. Check. Intense match here. Just imagine the pressure Scotty felt playing against an amateur. King nine on the board, two diamonds. This is like Darwin Moon versus Joe Cata, basically. Small bet from Scotty. 42,000. And Kevin calls. Scotty bets 42,000. Kevin calls, ace, king, nine. Jack. Jack. Turn currency, Jack. Scotty bets 120,000. Check to Scotty. Scotty bets 120. 120, but Scotty. Does he have a hand or is he still steaming from last time? We may get to find out. Kevin says Kevin I can. Kevin calls. Last card. Purple cards and eight of clubs. Eight of clubs. Kevin checks. Scotty. Scotty bets 300,000. 300,000. Jeez. Kevin folds. He had a straight Kevin flush. Had Queen, Jack of Diamonds. So pretty big hand there for Scotty Wynn picking it up with a bluff. Scotty there. Yeah. Yeah. Five year right. He's steaming a little bit there. Steaming a little bit Jamming there. Jamming He's feeling good now. Well, Saying, I got a few moves of my own. Very nice, Scotty. Thanks. Very nice. I'm Small sitting here with Susie Isaacs, Isaacs who finished 10th yesterday. A fantastic finish. Susie, uh, uh, yesterday we Four interviewed you. You were very others. emotional after it. How do you feel today? Today I feel very proud. I, uh, yesterday I was, I was proud and elated, and $40,000 is not chicken feed, you know. And it's only the third open field event I've ever played, and it's the first time I've ever played this event. But uh, I also was very disappointed because I wanted to be there today so badly. Now, you've won the Women's Championship twice. Right. And now you made uh, your 10th place here. Now, do you think this was, was this uh, as exciting as winning the Women's, or was this more exciting? Could you? If I were there now, it would be so much more exciting. Now, I don't want to take anything away from winning, women the winnings. I, winning the women's events. I was very proud of that. But I gotta tell you that until last night, I didn't get the, I did not feel the respect from these guys. Well, thanks so much for joining us and congratulations again on this great event. I hope you wanna talk to me again next year. You know Because I do something better. You got it. <laughs> nice talking to you. Kevin must have a big hand here. Uh, Susie Isaacs there, 10th place in the main event, of course, close to making that final table. Barbara Enright to date still the only woman to ever make the WSB main event final table. I believe that was back in 1998, the, the Dan Harrington year. Um, 
the bathroom the bathroom walk is definitely the hard the, the b biggest tell I've ever heard. All right, help me. Uh, to me, that's a telltale sign. Maybe he has some pretty decent. Checked. Yeah. Got it checked. Got it checked. Got it checked. Got it checked. One twenty. That's one hundred and twenty thousand. I think Jack was needling me, the tournament director over there. He said uh, the two gentlemen both checked. They said, but Phil bet. So when he waited there uh, before the flop and studied him for a long time, you put him on usually that he has a big, a serious hand. So he's contemplating whether he's going to raise at that point or just. That's call. what I was thinking. Right. Yeah. I believe Kevin McBride has ace queen. I raise. Oh, what? Scotty said he's going to raise. I think Scotty has ten jack here. Raise three I believe Kevin's going to call. He called. Scotty does have the nuts. I bet Kevin has about ace queen. Look at that! I called the hand. Looked exactly looked exactly the way it was to me. Now, Scotty made a great play there that he checked 4th Street to give himself that free card because if he would have bet 4th Street he would have gotten raised and not even been able to call. You send me down uh, the Kevin made a bad the move there. What you say on 4th Street by checking that? He let him have a free card. Definitely. All right, big chip lead now for Scotty Wynn making the nuts straight against McBride's top pair here in this heads-up battle from 1998. You can actually hear Mike Mazza cheering in the background when he uh, when he won. Check the two stacks of red. That's all he Scotty, on the other hand, made a good check, and he caught the Miracle Queen. He had three wins in the whole deck. The Miracle Queen came, and look at the payoff he got. He got paid over $420,000 because he checked it. We'll be right back. Uh, stay with us. See if the comeback kid from Florida can do it again. All right, we're getting closer. Closer to that famous hand that everybody is waiting for, or that famous quote, I should say. Uh, Ryan West says, what are the bet sizes? Boker was wild. Everything is wild about this. We can't see the blinds. The bet sizes are all over the place. The wild, wild west of poker. It's just it's just a thing to behold. It's beautiful. You guys should watch all these, by the way. They're all on Poker Go. Going back to 1973. It's fantastic. He's at this point, maybe a little agitated, especially Kevin McBride there from Florida. The big underdog in this event. Playing, of course, against uh, Scotty Nguyen. And Scotty's got a whole chip. Except maybe for... Oh, about the action goes back to Scotty, and he's he's there. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get a flop. Ooh, interesting flop. Yeah, mm -hmm. nine nine eight. Flop comes nine nine eight. Scotty checks, and Kevin comes out firing. Well, he's probably representing like uh, maybe Another a high pair cow. or an ace king or. Well, they raised before the flop. You should right. have two big cards, uh, something like that. Maybe a pair. Here he comes. Now, hey, Phil, how you doing? What do you think this of his hand? Phil. Getting money ready to raise here. Oh, I guess not. He makes a lot of moves like that, doesn't he? How much you got left, man? Mm, maybe. Just how much are you got? Constantly trying to make uh, Kevin talk. <coughs> mm-hmm. 350, maybe? Is that right, Jack? It's okay. So much chip shuffling from Scotty. <laughs> Almost makes me nervous. Look at this. Scotty calls 100,000. Boy, oh boy, I have no idea what Scotty has at this point. I mean, he could... He, He's given indications like he has like a, a nine or an eight or something. I mean, we'll find out now whether Scotty has a. Got 
Oh, oh my god. god, what is going on here? Could Scotty be slow playing a nine here, Vince? I think that's the play. If, if he does have a nine or an eight. Oh my god. Oh, Scotty oh, just moved all in. all in. I think Scotty has a nine here. And I think he's going to get, well, we'll see if he gets called or not. There it is. You think Kevin could have an overpay? All in, baby. I don't have any idea. Well, this is a very interesting hand here. You call gonna be all over, baby. <laughs> I call. I play the board. Kevin calls. Scotty's got a nine. Scotty's got a nine. Scotty's got a nine. Scotty's our new world champion. Wow, what a hand here! Scotty played this hand really well. He flopped for Party nines time, here, baby. and uh, he just checked it. He trapped the man who's been doing all the trapping, by the way. So you, tough, uh, you played well. You tough. played well. You're tougher than I am. You tough. played well. Uh, I thought Scotty may have had something powerful here. Thank you. Wow. What a legend. Wow, that's impressive. There's Daniel. There's Daniel in the back. You guys see that? We got Negrano in the background. Negrano in the back with the with the hat on. Wow, that's impressive. Look at that. L look at look at little Negrano over there. Kid Poker. Impressive. A lot of supporters for Scotty. A lot of supporters. What did, uh, what did Kevin have in his hand? He brought his whole family here. One million twenty thousand dollar pot. Juan Scotty Wynn. Our first Vietnamese world champion. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. We did it, man. Yeah. I'm standing here with Kevin McBride, who is the runner-up now of the world champion. Kevin, what did it feel like? Uh, you, you called at the very end because the the the, uh, the board paired, right. full boat on board. Right. Tell us about that hand. Well, I had I had a huge draw. I had queen ten of hearts, flush draw, straight flush draw. Um, the, I wouldn't have called the bet. The only thing is, Scotty said if you call it, it's all over. I didn't think he was uh, telling me the truth. He was. It's all over. It was a great play by Scotty. So the verbal thing, the reverse psychology yeah, right there, yeah. got you to call that that's, hand. That's what got me to call the hand. Right. That's exactly why I called the hand. If he hadn't said that, I would have. I would have folded the hand. I mean, it was all over for me anyway, in all likelihood. But I would have folded the hand. Did you ever expect at the beginning of the week when you were playing that satellite against me, yeah. which I knocked you out yes, and you had to do the refi? I beat, beat you. you. I should have been you. I had, to, I had to go to my wallet to get more money. <laughs> Did you ever think you'd be at the final table, the runner up of this event? Uh, I, realistically, I didn't think I would be at the final table. Everybody dreams about it, and this is a dream come true. I mean, I, I was not a loser today. No. Well, you, it's just a great effort what you did here. It's an inspiration for all the, uh, the young players that aren't champions, you know, to come out here and think they could do it just like you, and uh, maybe we'll see you next year. Well, I, I hope to be here next year. Thank you very much, Vince. Thank you. So this year belongs to Scotty Nguyen, the 1998 World Series of Poker Champions. This is my dream, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Sit next to you. Every day, <laughs> every day, before I walk out of the house, I, uh, I have the main magazine at home. You, you have the picture with the Stu Unger. Right, right, right. I just want to be right there next to you this okay, year. Okay, okay. my dream come true. Okay, you know what yes, I mean? Okay. Yes. You played good, you did a good job. And I'm proud of it. That's amazing. Look at that. Look at the smile on Scotty Wynn's face here at the end of the 1998 WSP main event final table. What a fantastic moment. Even more is being added to this moment by, by Scotty Wynn saying that he's been thinking about sitting there with Jack Binion with the cash because of the photo he had in his kitchen of Scotty Wynn with Jack Binion. This is such a cool moment. I'm so glad that I got that I watched this again, paid more attention to it, and, and dived back into this poker history and experienced it with you guys. I think it's really awesome to relive some of these moments. I'd highly encourage everyone out there to go check out these final tables on Poker Go. Just put them on in the background. Watch all these classics and learn about how the game evolved and everything that changed and how crazy it used to be and, and you know how lucky we all are for all these events to happen and connect, you know, rounders coming out. Johnny Chan, Eric Seidel, that whole thing blowing up, and then Moneymaker winning, and now we are here in 2021, uh, you know, still playing the game, still loving it. So it's pretty exciting that we have all this footage to look back on. 
Um, three, uh, 350 entries in the main event in 1998, one million dollars for Mr. Scotty Wynn. And uh, with that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I appreciate everyone tuning in. Um, next week, Adam Levy on the show. We're going to watch the 2008 and 2010 WSP main events. In case you guys don't know, Adam Levy, ruthless, the guy who Phil Helmuth called an idiot probably about a million times, and then Phil and Adam Levy uttering the words. Uh, I made an aggressive call, which, of course, iconic stuff. We're going to watch that and a whole lot more next week on Run It Back. Until then, please subscribe to the channel. Um, uh, hit the like button on the video. Do all that stuff. And then keep in mind, tomorrow it is going to be on Poker Go only. And it's going to be in front of the paywall. So sign up to Poker Go right now. Go check that out. We're going to have the action of the 50K No Limit Hold'em final table from Super High Roller Bowl Europe in Cyprus. Final table is headlined by... Phil Ivy. So you can't miss that. 830K up top. Coverage starts at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Brent Hanks and Jeff Platt on the call for that final table with Phil Ivy. I'll be back next week with more streaming. And until then, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please stay safe and good luck at the tables. See you next week.